Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video where today I'm going to be predicting the Premier League. Um, so how this is going to work is I'm going to do the top scorer, the the top assister, the player of the year, and the young player of the year. And then I'm going to do the table itself. But before we get right into it, uh, please make sure to like and subscribe for future content and also updates on the fan film. So let's get right into this. So the top scorer, that I have three people in mind. Uh, I've immediately, immediately eliminated one of them because I don't think they're going to perform this well. Oh, um, I don't think they're going to perform as good as they have been the last couple of seasons, which is Mo Salah. So that leaves me with two players. One that is heavily rumoured to go to Manchester City in Harold Kane. And the other one who is rumoured to be at Chelsea. Or is rumoured to go to Chelsea in the next couple of days. Uh, the Belgian Romelu Lukaku. Uh, I have decided to go for Romelu Lukaku. Um, I just feel like his style of play will really suit the Chelsea line, especially the attack as well. Because Werner had to drop it deep, even though he's not used to that. But Lukaku does already, so. Makes sense, and it will work well with the Chelsea line. So, I've chosen Romelu Lukaku for goal scorer of the year. And now, in my opinion, I'd like to call this award the wing man of the year, so the person who gets the most assists. Obviously, a couple of people that you could put in for this Kevin De Bruyne, Bruno Fernandes. So, uh, Mane, um, Madison, uh, Son, you could put in as well. And I have decided to go with Bruno Fernandes. I feel like with the addition of Jadon Sancho and Rafael Varane, and maybe a uh, defensive midfielder. Bruno will have more people to play it out wide to have more people to assist in the United squad and I felt that will really help. So I've got Bruno Fernandes as wingman of the year. Now young player of the year, if I understand this correctly, I'd be under 23 or 22. So that being said, I'm going to go with Should I? You know what? I'll back my, I'll back my brain. I'm gonna go with Jaden Sancho. I know he's just right for Man United, but I'll be honest with you. I expect him to start working with the team well because obviously you got Rashford, Lingard, Maguire, Shaw, Henderson. He's going to kind of settle in easier because he's people he's already been around with, especially this summer. And I feel like that will greatly benefit his playing ability as well. And also, in fact, he's already got a good working relationship with Bruno Fernandes. Will help him tremendously. And obviously learning off the likes of Rashford on the attack. To kind of bolster the Man United attack. And also because now I've got a more consistent right midfielder. He'll be able to like have a good connection with Aaron Basaka and Diogo Dalot, or if he plays on left in the first couple of months because Rashford's out with a shoulder injury, I feel like he'll be able to form a good connection with Luke Shaw, and I feel like he'll be very consistent and he'll be one of the best players in United this season, and I can guarantee that. Now the big one, player of the year, many candidates you could have for this, obviously Van Dijk's coming back, so he's going to be one of the people to look out for. Ruben Diaz, um, Kevin De Bruyne, Bruno Fernandes, Harry Kane, Romelu Lukaku, um, <coughs> Kai Havertz, Declan Rice, um, they're like the nine that I'm thinking. I'll get rid of Declan Rice. Um, 
I'll get rid of everyone but Van Dyke, Diash, De Bruyne and Kane. They're the four I'm thinking. Uh, I'll get rid of Diash. I'll get rid of Van Dyke. And I think this year's player yeah again will go to Kevin De Bruyne. He's been too good these last couple of se seasons to not warrant him to be player of the year. I mean, this year just gone by, I don't feel like he should have been player of the year. That should have been Ruben Dias. But it's Kevin De Bruyne. Uh, that's how it is. So, now we can get to the nitty gritty bit. The Premier League table. Now, in 20th place, sorry Ben Foster, I've got Watford. Now, I don't think Watford have made the signings, like the essential signings, to stay up in the Premier League. And I feel like they are becoming the yo-yo team. One of the yo-yo teams, along with Norwich. So it's not really going to help them if they're going to not put funds into the team and have it like a good team. Obviously, Ismaili Sarr uh, does not belong at Watford. He needs to go to another team. Like, I don't know, maybe an Everton or or West Ham, somewhere along those lines. But, Watford, last place, pretty simple. 19th, I've got Norwich City, and I would have them lower, but I feel like they have kind of, they can improve with the funds that they got from Buendia. I feel like in January they could bring in some serious backup. Maybe, uh, I can't think of anyone right now, but they could definitely get some better players in on the right-hand side that could do what Buendia did, but for a lot cheaper and maybe a bit more efficient. But Buendia's going to be a big loss at Norwich, and I feel like that's the reason they're going to get relegated. Cap Miles obviously linked me a move away as well, so that's not gonna really work well for them. But we'll see. So the final relegation spot, who am I giving it to? There's a lot of teams I could go here. Brentford's not one of them. Southampton's not one of them. The team I predict to go down with Norwich and Watford is Burnley. Now the reason I've chosen Burnley is because I feel like Sean Dyche has got the best out of the team for the last six years and right now their time in the Premier League's up. They have not invested well in the team. Sean Dyche has been pulling everything out of that team and Sean Dyche should not be the manager of Burnley anymore. Sean Dyche should be the manager of a big big club I mean I won't mind if he was the manager of I mean if Arsenal got Sean Dyke I'd be more confident in Marcel's future because to me Mikel Arteta is not the person to lead Arsenal forwards Sean Dyke is the kind of manager that Arsenal needs but Burnley I think they're about to lose one of the best managers because I don't think Sean Dyke can keep going at the level he is he needs to get to another level and I feel like the only way he can do that is if he goes to a better team because I don't feel like they're going to improve the Burnley team anytime soon and that's it to be honest with you Burnley you're getting relegated mate 17th I've got Brentford now this team they are running themselves well they're not running themselves like a business they're running their actual football club like some clubs like to be honest Arsenal and United they're being run like businesses not clubs so Brentford side run themselves like football clubs and with the attack excuse me with the attack of Ivan Tony, who I think can really convert himself into the Prem and get at least 15 goals I'm seeing Brentford staying up and I've seen they can use their investments wisely next summer and get some good players in, get some quality players in 
and start to build their team into a really formidable mid-table team. But coming up in 16th is a team that defensively is amazing, but they have nothing on the attack. They could not score to save their life. And I feel like we all know who it's who we're talking about. It's Brighton and Hove Albion. Hove Albion. Now, to be honest, this team is not doing well attacking wise. Neil Malpe has really dropped off. He's not scoring. And if Aston Villa didn't get Danny Ings, I feel like Brighton with Danny Ings would have been Hate to say it, I feel like they would have been above Arsenal where I put them. It's just that simple. They have one of the best defences in the league, yet they cannot cons they cannot create the chances and they cannot score the chances. That is the main problem with Brighton. And I don't know, maybe get into one like Alexander uh, Isaac from the Swedish international team, the Swedishman. Or Um, I don't know, but they need a striker. Mikel Antonio could be someone. Rodrigo. But yeah, as long as Brighton do not get a good attacking lineup, they will not get anywhere higher, in my opinion, than 14th. But, speaking of getting near that area, in 15th place I've got Southampton. Now, I'll be honest with you guys, I made this list before Danny Ings was sold to West Ham. <laughs> so now I'm not I'm not as confident that Southampton will fish mid table. I feel like Southampton, Brighton and Brentford, even Burnley will all be in a fight for relegation. Norwich and Watford will just be out of the easiest pie. And yeah. Southampton are in a dire situation. They've lost their best player at to Aston Villa, a rival club, because Aston Villa and Southampton are mid-table, so you're not really wanting to sell a clinical striker like Danny Ings, who could consistently get goals, to a team like Aston Villa, who have just lost their best player for 100 million, by the way, and they have got another great striker, Danny Ings, who I'm seeing pairing up with Ollie Watkins next season and them two will be formidable they will be one of the best teams they'll be one of the best strike forces in the mid table and that's how I see it for Aston Villa but Southampton really need to get their, they really need to get some money in the club and get better players because right now where I'm seeing it I don't think Southampton will be in the Premier League by 2024 but in 14th new manager new kind of restructuring the club Crystal Palace now the reason I have so much faith in this club is because they're bringing in a lot of youngsters who will get play time that's a problem with some of the bigger clubs like right right now to be honest Liverpool they're not getting, they're not giving the youngsters as much chances, so they have to loan them out, which is the problem. But somewhere like Crystal Palace, they're giving their youngsters a chance, and I feel like that will pay off. And yes, there's, there is questions over Patrick Vieira and his managerial capabilities, but I feel like he can really knuckle his head down, get Crystal Palace where they need to be, which is fighting in the mid table, and. I can see Crystal Palace in the next three to four years really fighting for something like 10th and 9th place because they are building for the future very well and they're investing well in the youngsters unlike any other club. No other club is buying as much youngsters as Crystal Palace and they are looking forward to the future. They're going to sacrifice these couple of seasons so their players can get playing time, they can connect better, they can play better and that it's all just going to be it's all going to go no house for them but in 13th one of the teams I'm very disappointed in and one of the teams that I think in the Premier League Premier League have had the biggest drop off 
in performance and I've got to say Wolverhampton Wanderers I I'm just disappointed in the team um, obviously they've got Ralph Jimenez back their main striker but I'm not really seeing much going to happen with that they brought Trent Cowan to the team as a loan option which is good obviously Barcelona are in a bit of a fucking crisis right now <laughs> but that's how I see it um, they've got Poro as the right wing back now obviously they've still got Darba Traore which is good but if I was Traore I'd get out of that club that is not where he wants to be if he wants to win trophies and that is every player's priority is to win trophies I mean that's the reason Jack Grealish went to Man City in the first place because he knew Aston Villa would give him trophies at that time. He wanted trophies, went to Man City. And I feel like Triori needs to do a similar thing, go to a club that would give him playing time and will get him trophies. Sorry about that. That's a kick my mind. But as I was saying, um, yeah, Wolves 13th, I'm not seeing them improve that much in the next couple of years. Coming in at 12th, um, bit of a surprise one, I'd say. Um, I've got Newcastle United. Now, they're going to be signing Joe Willock from Arsenal for 25 million, which is a steal. He's only, I think he's only worth 15 million, in my opinion, but English inflation tax, I guess. Uh, Newcastle, I feel like they just have a very good style of football that they're playing and that's really showing in the results that they're getting and I am looking forward to them playing the season and also their star man Joe Willock will be back into the into the team and we'll see how he performs on a permanent now but <clears throat> honestly you can place Newcastle anywhere if they play good football and they have good players they will probably finish where I put them but if they do not do well I'm seeing them fight for relegation to be honest with you but that's Newcastle for you it could be any sort of things this season could be a high or a low and I'm seeing it to be a high but coming in in 11th I have got Aston Villa now Obviously, the question is going to be without their star man, Jack Grealish. Can they really perform to a level that they have been doing? My answer is yes. With the signings of Leon Bailey, Buendia and Danny Ings, Newcastle have had one of the best transfer windows in the Premier League. That is three quality signings. And whilst they have lost Jack Grealish, They've got more people, more attacking players to rely on than just one player. And Danny Ings, Leon Bailey, Buendia are going to be rock solid up front. And also Ollie Watkins, who I'm seeing is going to play more of a central attacking midfielder role or a shadow striker behind Danny Ings. Or you can flip it all the way around, have the person who has more pace up front and then you can... Anyways, but I'm seeing Aston Villa as a team that is going to be a confident mid-table team. Um, I'm seeing them fight with the likes of Everton and Arsenal maybe. We'll see how it goes, but goal scoring wise, I feel like they're going to be getting a lot of goals this season. But finally the halfway mark, and in 10th place we have got Everton. Now, Everton, I've kind of had a soft spot for Everton, you know. But this season, I'm not seeing anything performing well for them. Rafa Bini has come into the club, does not seem like good business, especially after all the stuff he said about Everton when he was Liverpool manager. So it's not going to make much sense. And yeah, to be honest, I don't have much to say about Everton, it's just I think they're going to perform poorly this season. And that's all I can really say. Now, coming in ninth, I. I've got Arsenal. Now, I've seen a lot of videos of people putting Arsenal on like 6th or 5th, and I'm not agreeing with it. I don't feel like Arsenal have made the right signings to improve the team dramatically. 
Ben White for 50 million is a fucking. It's not a bargain. Ben White is like a 30 million pound defender at best. But it's Arsenal, it's an English player, so. But, uh, do I see Arsenal improving that much? If Pierre, if Pierre Emerick Bamiang performs, yes. I will see them fighting with the likes of Tottenham West Ham. But, it's just that they have a good defence. It's, it's a bit like a Brighton situation. They have the third best defence in the league last season, Arsenal. But their attack was poor. Lacazette and Aubameyang did not perform at all. And that is a problem. But if they do perform this season, I'll tell you this, I'm seeing Arsenal as a good threat in the fight for Europa League this season. But coming in, in 8th, my hometown, Leeds United. Now, they've got one of the best managers in the league in Marco Bielsa. They've got some of the, some really good players. They've signed Junior, Junior Fiapo. Um, they've got like some Rodrigo. They've got Jack Harrison on the permanent. They've got Rafinha. Uh, Calvin Phillips is still at the club. So, they're really building a good team, and I feel like Leeds are going to start challenging for top four in the next six years because of how good their team is going to be. And their style of football is so good. Like, no one has really had an answer for it yet, besides from maybe United and City. But I've seen Leeds being a very big threat for Europa League, and I hope they do get Europa League this season. But because the likes of Tottenham, Leicester and West Ham will have Europa League football Leeds can really capitalise that on the fitness level and push their way up the league a bit but we'll see because to us from ninth to 6th I'm seeing a really big battle here coming in at 7th we have got Tottenham Hotspur now Tottenham regardless of if they lose Kane or not if they lose Kane I'll put them 10th if they don't lose Kane, seventh. That's how I see it because the team is in a bit of a crisis right now. Their team is not going well. I mean, Brian Gill, they've signed Brian Gill, who is, to me, not a great defender. And that's just a problem. They're not signing great players. They are signing bang average players, and now they're becoming a bang average team with Young Min Son and Harry Kane in it somehow and that's what Tottenham's going to become Young Min Son as soon as Harry Kane leaves Young Min Son is out the door because them two those two players have the best connection in the Premier League when them two play together on the same field in the same team on the same day no one is having better connection and better chemistry than them two at all Maybe Neymar and Messi could have it, but no. Those two together are like peas in a fucking pod. And when Kane goes to Manchester City, Hyung Min Son is going to leave as well, no doubt. But Tottenham 7th in 6th. I've got a bit bold, I'm not too sure. Um, it could go any way for this team this season, but... Um, I'm going to go West Ham United. Now, last season, I was very impressed by how they performed. Um, David Moyes has really boosted his reputation as a Premier League manager now that he got West Ham to sixth place. Uh, obviously, they've got some great talent like Declan Rice, Thomas Suchek. The loan of Jesse Lingard from Man United worked out wonders. And I do hope... I really do hope that they do sign Jesse Lingard on a permanent because that would actually be vital for their team in an attacking lineup. But besides from that, for West Ham to really progress, they need to sign someone like Patrick Schick up front. They need to get a better goalkeeper who's not aging. And to be honest, the defence is fine. They just need to find a better left back. To get 
to the levels of someone like Leicester City, who are the best of the rest, or I would say now we're the new top six. But we'll see how West Ham operate this season. We'll see how it goes. But we've got to the top five, the interesting ones. Uh, just spoilers, it's the same as last season. It's the same um, teams, obviously. But in fifth, I've got Leicester City. Now, their strikers are really good. You've got Jamie Vardy, who... Whilst he has been slowing down the last couple of years, he's still a prolific striker. But you've also got Kelechi and Ethan Acho, who, until last season, was a flop. But now he's coming into his own, he's getting goals, he's getting assists, and he's really getting into his own rhythm here. He's fitted in, he is securing the team, and he is playing better than anyone has ever seen him play. And Brendan Rodgers, as the Leicester City manager, is just doing so good. Uh, obviously, the likes of Harvey Barnes, Demarai Gray, Casper uh, Schmeichel, uh, Soyuncu, uh, James Madison, Wilfred Ndidi, Yuri Tillemans. Some of these players are really good, and I feel like if Leicester get one or two more crucial signings, like, let's say, uh, another defender, like Leicester need to stop playing five and back and play four, have two defenders, and uh, maybe sign a. I would have said Konate, but he's got to Liverpool, so tricky there. But yeah, they just need another centre back to go with Sun Koo, and then I think they're sorted. But besides from that, Leicester at fifth, until they can get to that next level, which is going to be very difficult. I've not seen them get into the top four anytime soon. Now the top four. Man City, Man United, Chelsea, Liverpool. Where do I see all these places? Well in fourth place I have got Liverpool. Now it's an Asian squad. Getting old. Um, Salah, Mane, Firmino have not been at their best. The top the front three, the Deadly front three have not been played at the best. Um, Salah has still been at that level, but Firmino has been really dropping off. Mane has dropped off slightly, but he's still keeping up at the level that he needs to. Uh, the crucial thing, though, is that they have not played, uh, replaced Wijnaldum. And I'm still questioning how the fuck they let Wijnaldum go on a free. It's still mind-boggling to me. Because Jorginho, Jorginho Wijnaldum was one of the best centre mids in the Premier, in my opinion. And now Liverpool have lost him and they have not fully replaced him. Obviously we're going to have Henderson, Keita in the midfield, but I don't see anyone else really going there. Maybe Curtis Jones could play in there, but I don't feel like we need to rely on youngsters in Liverpool which is why they're not getting much youngsters play time, which is why a lot of youngsters at the local academy are not really rising for the ranks, if you know what I mean. But Curtis Jones, I feel like he could play that position. And obviously with the return of Van Dijk and Joe Gomez, it'll be a good defence for Liverpool, but obviously they've also got Ibrahima Canate to add to that defence, to bolster it. And obviously you've got Trent on the right, you got Andy Robertson up left, but we'll see how his injuries are. And I don't know, I'm just not seeing Liverpool live up to the hype that they're getting right now. And I'm not seeing Liverpool get a title challenge going. I don't. <clears throat> I feel like Liverpool would have been a little bit of a league of the road this season. <clears throat> but uh, in third place, bit of a bold one. I've gone with Chelsea. Now, obviously they signed Romelu Lukaku, who is one of the best strikers in the world right now, and I'm seeing this team really improving. Thomas Tuchel has really improved the team. He's really bolted it. He has got Jules Kunde. He's got Romelu Lukaku. Great defenders, and 
who knows? I think next year Chelsea could win the Prem if they sign another player. I won't say who, but I, I've got to be honest, uh, another goalkeeper. Mendy and Kepa have not been really living up to it in my opinion, and you see the trend with the top four teams. Obviously, Man City, they've got Edison at Liverpool, they've got Allison at United, they've got De Gea and Dean Henderson. But Chelsea, that's the problem, goalkeeper. They need a world-class goalkeeper, not a top six goalkeeper. That's how it is with Chelsea. As long as they don't have the world-class goalkeeper they need, there's no Premier League title for them, I'm afraid. But coming in second is my team, my favourite team in the Premier League of, of all time. I support these. Uh, it is Manchester United. Now with the signing of Jadon Sancho for 73 million and Rafael Varane for 30, 34 million. We got Rafael Varane, one of the greatest centre backs in the world, for 34 million pounds. Wow. <laughs> Two years ago, it would have been worth like 80, 90, but it's worth 34. That just proves how dire of a situation Real Madrid are in. They've sold one of the best centre backs for 34 million. Ramos has gone to PSG for nothing. But Man United have really seen them improve, and obviously, we have heavy links to people like Saul, Camavinga, and Didi, and under Herrera which by the way don't bring back Herrera bring someone like a Didi and have like a 4-3-3 where you have Indeedy and Pogba but Pogba could play more of a playmaker on the side of that Bruno Fernandes and then Indeedy could be the one who could slot in just in front of the uh, two centre backs to create a triangle that's how it should work but as long as we don't have a top class uh, CDM, no Premier League for us, I'm afraid. Which is why that the winners of the Premier League this season, I predict, are going to be the other side of Manchester, Manchester City. Now, their team is OP already, alright? Don't get me wrong, their team is fucking amazing. But when you add someone, like Jack fucking Grealish you know the season's over because Grealish is one of the pe one of the few people in Premier League only him, De Bruyne and Fernandes they're the only three that make multiple chances they create chances multiple times and Man City have got two of the three most creative players in the Premier League and Grealish well, how do I see him playing? I've seen him playing on the left wing with Sterling on the right and Gabriel Jesus up front. Or I see Grealish playing alongside De Bruyne and them two playing cams or like centre mids. And then Grealish can kind of roam off on the left to help Sterling or Silva or whoever the fuck it is on the wide side. But City with Pep Guardiola are just... They are the Goliath that you need to beat. But you cannot because they keep improving and improving and improving. Pep Guardiola is getting close to spending a billion pounds as a Manchester City manager. That will never have been done before. Pep Guardiola will be the first manager to spend a million a billion pounds at one single club. And with that being said, I think Man City are going to be the champions of the Premier League this season. Do I think next season? Yeah, who knows. But, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching this video. I know it's kind of rolled on a bit longer than I wanted it to. But, you know, it is what it is. And, with, got my GCSE results, and I am solid. <laughs> Yeah. But anyways guys, thank you all so much for watching. Take care and <laughs> peace.